You know what I like to do? Talk into a microphone? Yeah, and also <laughs> get in on the action with Have sports a big interaction. Head. Yeah, wear bare feet in the freezing cold. <laughs> Be a dad. Freaking wear V-necks that are actually it's not a V-neck. Okay. Sorry. Um, sports interaction, NHL, NBA, MLB, so much more. It's the friend I don't have. Clearly, uh, crazy odds, best live and play. Download the app in Ontario. You can use the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or you can head to sportsinteraction.com/stpn to get started. Nineteen plus. Please, please play responsibly and get better friends. Just yell at the computer. He does that too. Brandon Shanahan announced today the club has decided to part ways with general manager Kyle Dubas. Okay. The club has decided to part ways with Kyle Dubas? Yeah, the the club is making it seem... Because here's what we know. We know that the extension was being worked on and that it was pretty much worked out. We know that we went to the press conference and Dubas said, I recently found out how hard this was on my family. And we should have known, according to CJ, by Tuesday or Wednesday. And it's now Friday and we're finding out. Du- uh, Shanahan is due to speak at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Um, because, of course, it has to be a Friday news dump. A-holes. It's a long weekend. Um I listen, they did it during the show. We couldn't have asked. For yeah, I guess. I guess. But I do think it's relevant that they say the club has decided to part ways with him, which should be the uh, death nail in this being a process driven organization. Never has been, never was. Uh, what do you mean? What? Well, and it's and it's from like we know this because of CJ's insights into the organization. Mm hmm. After the 2019 loss to Boston, after the Game 7 loss, CJ said, after the 2019 loss, it was obvious to me, definitely, because I went on a big rant, that was the time to fire Mike Babcock. Mm -hmm. And CJ said, they're not going to do it. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, then that's going to ruin next season. And that's exactly what it did. Um, sure Sheldon Keefe came in and was hot for a while but the team was very clearly out of sorts Um, you know they lost to Columbus in the bubble they probably they may not have even made the playoffs but what CJ said kept Babcock in charge was game five Mm -hmm. against the Bruins so you had dozens and dozens and dozens of games worth of data of this guy losing his way Dubas yelling at Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Well, that was that was afterward. Mm-hmm. There, there was the famous clip of Dubas saying he has to know they figured out something, something, something. Yes, he started. Yes, he started the wrong guys in overtime in yes. the game against the Blue Jackets. Uh, but game five against the Bruins was tight, and they won a tight playoff game, and that was progress, and that was something they hadn't done, and that's why they stuck with Babcock, despite. All other evidence saying this guy's cooked at very least in this city with this group. Fast forward. They beat Tampa. When did CJ say the decision was made to extend Kyle Dubas? After the series in Tampa. After the series in Tampa. Mm -hmm. They lose in five games to Florida. So five games later. Mm -hmm. It's up in the air, but we understand he likely has a contract offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after a poor showing at a press conference, Mm -hmm. they decide not to bring him back. They got new information. They got new information. And it was one piece of information. And I guess that information was important enough to them Mm -hmm. that they decided we can't do this. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm not even criticizing them for it it what i'm doing is i'm showing you that this is a team done screwing around okay and i think it's a team done waiting i i am what's well, a board done waiting it's a board done waiting and believe me i am not trying to position this as a good thing i don't know if it's a bad thing either well this but when teams get listen the, the leafs have an extremely tight deadline right now They have five weeks to make enormous decisions. Five weeks until Marner's no move clause kicks in. Five weeks until they're able to sign Matthews to an extension. Five weeks until they're able to sign Nylander to an extension. Uh, What are we doing with the coach? Who are we picking in the draft? Um, I guess Shanahan is staying. Well, I don't know. For now. So, so, But they're done screwing around. They just had a, a really disheartening playoff loss. And I think this team is in its most emotional state 
it's been in in a number of years through all of the first round defeats and everything through the Montreal series. I think there's a really good chance your favorite team is going to be torn apart. I have a, I have a, uh, or least favorite team, and that's hilarious. You might be one of those people that's like, great, they're done screwing around. And that sounds good on the surface. Um, however, I think, be careful here because... The Blackhawks were done screwing around when they lost to Nashville in 2016, and, and they ruined the franchise. Right, exactly. And I think you have to remember what the Leafs were before 2015. Uh, and from about 2004 to 2015, this franchise was... I, I, I'm shocked they could sell tickets. When you look at the, when you look at the, the go look at the rosters in like 20, 2008, you know, who was the second line center behind Matt's poor Matt's eh? he's a freaking saint. He never, oh. he never bitched once about the horrendous mismanagement. This, this organization went through under John Ferguson jr. I count Brian Burke on that. Although I felt like things were getting better. And then the board didn't like when, when, you know, when the pigeon plan uh, sold it and, and Rogers and bell bought into it. He refused to trade. What? Matt's, what's the matter with you? Yeah. Like, forget, you know, there's a number of Leaf fans who still hold it against him that he refused to trade so the Leafs could get assets. Okay, okay. Leaving the assets aside, Matt's, yeah. don't you want to win? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. You, well, you, and you, gotta, you gotta, that's the golden ticket. You're free. Be free, Genie. <laughs> you, you don't have to play for this godforsaken team anymore. And he said, no, J.S. O'Ban is my starting goalie. Let's go. Yeah. Matt's, you've lost your mind. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm concerned here for a few reasons. People are, I'm looking at the reactions on Twitter and stuff. I'm concerned here for a few reasons. Number one, you've got a Maple Leafs board that's not, uh, not thrilled about how things have gone. And rightly so. If you're a Leafs fan and you're thrilled about their playoff success, uh, you shouldn't be. I, uh, this is not good enough, and I don't think you'd find many that are. No. But but one thing this organization is that it was not 10 years ago is solid from the ECHL to the AHL to the NHL. They have they the Leafs used to be maligned, and you guys may not remember this because now we're now we're in our mid-30s and we're old. We're boomers now. And 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 this is a team that used to have regular, there used to be regular articles written about how bad the medical staff was. There used to be regular articles written about how lackadaisical uh, it was behind the scenes, not just for the Leafs, but for the Raptors, too. Um, oh, really? It, it, well, in the culture, right? in Richard Petty's book, he talks about how, like, Vince Carter's mom still wanted her free tickets to the game when Vince Carter was no longer in Toronto. <laughs> like, that's the kind of... What? Yes, that's the kind of uh, C-suite culture that existed at MLSE before uh, before about 10 years ago, before LightWiki showed up. And I think... Um, Anthony uh, Petrelli said something interesting on Twitter here. He said, I don't think Kyle Dubas did a bad job by any means, but through five years, they never really broke through. And it's fair to wonder if one, he was willing to make the tough decisions, at, AKA move his guys, fire his friend, etc., And two, if a fresh set of eyes is needed to get it to the next level. And the key thing here for you as a fan is who's the next guy. And, and there are good candidates out there. I'm, I'm blown away that Stan Bowman's been talking to people. Uh, but they, but he has, and he's going to meet with the league apparently, along with Joel Quinville. I'm once the season's done. Tremendously nervous that Bettman is having those meetings today. No, no, it's supposed to be when the season's done. He's not having those meetings today. Yeah, oh, I thought the Quinville one before he can accept the job, it, the season has to be over. That's what Bettman said. I won't meet with him until the season over. Oh. That was the Darren Dreger report. Okay, good. So, um, so beyond that, we know that like Pete Shirelli, people like Pete Shirelli are being interviewed. But then you've got Eric Tolsky. And I, I, if I'm a Leaf fan, look this guy up. Look this guy up. This guy's the next guy to me. That I would get excited about. And maybe, maybe it is time. Whatever Kyle's reasons were, whatever the board's reasons were, maybe it is time to look at this. And you could look at it with a glass half empty because, you know, we're all Leaf fans and we're all hysterically anxious about everything. And I get it. As my therapist likes to tell me, he's like, you know, your brain instantly goes to what if the worst happens? And he said, what's interesting about you, he's like, is you never go, oh, that's what, why we're friends. what if the best happened? Mm -hmm. What if something great happens out of this? And there are great candidates out there. I think it's wrong to assume that because Kyle Dubas is out, they're going to go get some calculator ignoring numbers, ignoring knuckle dragger. Mm -hmm. 
I, I really don't think that's a good path forward. Um, I think if your team is bottom of the standings real bad, um, yeah, you're going to want like a complete reset like that. But going from someone like Dubas to Tulski, I think is actually a very good transition. Like, does this team need to be completely blown up or does it need one major change and... Well, here's here's what the lineup weeks. looks like next year, according to James Myrtle, without RFAs. Uh, without RFAs? Without RFAs. Well, if you, I'll, I'll give you with RFAs. So it I'm, should be with. So, sorry, with RFAs, yeah. okay? RFAs, so, you should always assume are coming back. So empty on the left wing at the top line. Then you got Matthews Marner. Tavares, in this piece, uh, Myrtle says, it's time to move Tavares to the wing. I think if you saw him play Florida, you can see why. Uh, no right. C2, no center, no second line center, and William Nylander. And then you got Matt Nyes on the third line, no third line center, Callie Yonkroak, and then potentially Nick Robertson, potentially Nolachari retained at $1.5 million, and then Sam Lafferty, who is actually signed. Nolachari is a UFA. Um, and then assuming that Luke Shen gets signed for somewhere close to a million dollars, you got Riley Shen, McKay Brody, Giordano, Timothy Lilligren, and, and this is Connor Timmons as well, who's also signed. Yeah. And then he says, uh, Myrtle says that they think that Samsonov's number, who, who is an RFA, will be somewhere, somewhere in, in, in the three million dollar range. Yeah, that's and then what I figured. Wool has a crazy contract. He signed for two more years at seven hundred and sixty six thousand dollars a year. It's absolutely fantastic. We're we're jumping ahead a lot. Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. know if I, I, I well, want to give context to what the GM's moving into. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like we're we're jumping ahead to the next GM and that stuff. But I'd like to know, like, what do you guys think about the era? Because Kyle Dubas's era as general manager has come to an end. Like, I yeah. think, what are you guys looking back on this time that he was in charge of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Success? Failure? Uh, obviously, he didn't win the Stanley Cup, but how are you guys going to, what are the big moments? And what do you think he takes away from this? <sighs> Doomed to fail, in a way. You think um, so? Well, no, 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 no. Okay. And the Leafs, I think, gave him all the resources to succeed. Yeah. And he, in turn, gave the Leafs all the resources they needed to succeed. Um, sports science, analytics uh, department, which I don't believe they previously had, everything, right? But, uh, you know, I, I've said this, and you can call him unlucky. You can, you can say that's not an excuse. But at the end of the day, he hitched his wagon to four guys and the idea that the cap was going to go up. That's he hitched his wagon to that. The world ended a once in a generation, not even a once in a century pandemic happened and the cap froze. The world froze and it ruined the plan. He stuck to it. And we talked about how this team, you know, maybe isn't process, uh, process oriented. He stuck to the process and we know now that was the wrong move. Um, how wrong was it? I don't know. Like they gave us a number of highly entertaining, highly successful regular seasons. The most successful regular season stretch in Toronto Maple Leafs history. Yeah. So, you know, we're we're talking about a guy who failed to achieve his goal, but mm -hmm. wasn't a failure. Um, like he did some really good things. I mean, the Florida Panthers won the President's Trophy by leaps and bounds last year, and I don't think we're thrilled to barely sneak into the playoffs this year. Like, you can't tell me the way they got in by the skin of their teeth was by design. It just happened that way. They also have a team that's clearly built for it, right? Uh, clearly built for the playoffs and made the necessary adjustments. So he, he hitched his wagon to these four guys in the cap going up. It didn't. He didn't adjust off of that core and instead opted to lose guys like Hyman, Mikheyev. They're going to lose bunting. Go back further. I, I mean, Barabanov. Go back further. Uh, go back further. Gardner, Van Gardner, Riemsdyk, Van Riems Bozak. Guys that he should have traded. Yeah. And he should have been more. Vi uh, the one thing I'll say with Dubas is he loves his guys. We know that. Mm -hmm. Loves his guys. I would have liked earlier on. For this, for in his tenure, for him to be more vicious. If I was, if I'm looking back on this, if you had moved, I know that they thought they had a legitimate run at the cup, but looking back, no, they didn't. <laughs> and they were going to make the playoffs anyway. You could have got young players in. There were people that wanted JVR. There were people that wanted Bozak, and you would have been like, Adam, that's crazy. 
No one's ever done that. Yeah, they have. You got to look at it at the time. I I, feel I know like a lot of people wanted it. You got to build for the next five years. I know. I know. This is 2018 we're talking about. I think Dubis, you know, G- assistant GMs do a ton of the work. Mm-hmm. And I think the perfect situation for all his faults probably would have been to have kept Lou around for another year or two. And a lot of people are not going to want to hear that. But you give Dubas a couple more years to learn. Dubas would have gone to Colorado. We know that. So that's the thing. Yeah, that was the thing. They had Colorado not, or Arizona. Had they not moved on, yeah. he was gone. He needed, yes. he we needed know a that. promotion or else he would have left for somewhere else. For me, like I look at this and it feels like right now it could have been the opportunity for Dubas to truly grow into the role that he should be in to build this team if he was willing to make the big changes. Now seemed like the turning point for it seemed like he got to the the curve and he's about to climb the top of the mountain if he's willing to make the big changes to the roster that we all see are now necessary because we had a five year process and we got to the end of that. And now we kind of know what needs to be done and what need, pieces need to be moved out. And he's not going to get that opportunity. And the team was willing to give him the opportunity. They made him an offer, but they keep saying that they that. They, they, the Leafs just put out their official yeah. press release, and it says again the club has decided to part ways with Kyle Dubas. Guys, it sounds like they I got a question. It. I'm wondering, and I was talking to somebody in the industry a couple days ago, and, it, and CJ even said it on this show last episode. He was like, "Yo, guys, like, I don't know if he can come back from what he said at the press conference. Yeah. That deal was done. It changed. Yeah, we it know the deal everything. was done. It he just hadn't everything. signed it. He shouldn't. I shouldn't say he shouldn't have done that publicly, but like doing that publicly cost him a lot." I mean, this team's biggest failure or Achilles heel has been their ability to perform under pressure. And I think in that moment, the pressure got to him. Mm -hmm. And maybe the team saw that and said, the problem goes higher up than we thought. Mm Mm-hmm. And like we we've been talking about the rosters. Uh, CJ uh, on last show said if a new guy comes in, the chances of Sheldon Keith coming back are around somewhere like five. Now nah, you 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 hold on to him because that's that's the first thing you do once they don't they don't yeah. win right away. You know, <laughs> Sheldon Keith is primed for a January firing. Oh, like, I don't. I don't think they're. Well, I, then I think they've learned gone. nothing. <laughs> no, no, he's gone. He's no, gone. but that, that's the NHL no, for you. No, the and, new guy's gonna want. No, uh, you, this, you, this isn't even about. He's under contract. You let him sit for like three months, and then you fire him. You bring in your guy. This that's how it goes every time, you guys. This isn't even about like fire Keith because he's bad. Yeah. It's fire Keith because the dude got off to such a poor start in Toronto, in part because uh, it took him forever to get a training camp. One, because he came in mid-season. Mm-hmm. Two, again, I have to reiterate, the world stopped. Yeah. <laughs> the world stopped. And for this guy to have his first proper training camp took something like two or three years. Mm-hmm. I uh, Do we, do we want to read the full Brendan statement? Because we haven't done that yet. Yeah, yeah. He talked about the culture. Do you want me to do it? My phone's going yeah. absolutely mad okay so uh let me just pull it up here so uh um do you want me to brandon shanahan president and alternate governor of the toronto maple Leafs, announced today that the club has decided to part ways with general manager kyle dubas and i people are ripping me on twitter at the moment because i think that that line matters and people like you're reading too much into it i'm like Steve, you've dealt with Leafs PR. Are you how, tweeting during the stop show? Stop tweeting during how the show. They? How are they? How are Leafs PR? <laughs> uh, tight. They're tweeting. They're what? Tight. Protective. Tight. Protective. Intentional. Yeah, deliberate. Right. So would they say that the club decided to part ways with the general manager if the club had not decided to part ways with the general manager? No, that's very deliberate. Thank you. Dubas's contract is set to expire June 30th. He will not return as Toronto's general, next general manager. I would like to thank Kyle for his unwavering dedication over these last nine seasons with the organization, including his last five as general manager. Kyle fostered a great culture within our dressing room and staff and consistently pushed to make our team better season over season. We wish Kyle and his family the best moving forward, and we thank him for his valuable contributions. That's it? That's it. That's all we got so far. There, we're we're going to get a do, We're getting a Shanahan press conference at 3 o'clock. Get ready, man. We are? Yeah, Shani, oh. Shani's going to speak to the media. Oh, and cool. you know what I love about this is that you're going to have to do a video immediately afterwards. Yep. Enjoy your Friday, sir. Nope. Uh, yeah. Oh, 